and on today's show, how using truth concepts supports prosperity economics. Part five of this week's series on the new prosperity economics with registered investment advisor, Kim Butler. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician in Innsmark. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to day five. Thank you, Steve. And, and according to you, we're going to be using the truth serum today. <laughs> now, before we get started, if you're coming into our Friday show, I, I highly recommend, because you're going to be lost, you need to look and start at Monday's show to get a good tutorial experience and watch the show segments in chronology. And also, just remember that Kim has three books out. One is called Busting the Financial Planning Lies, which we've been talking about all this week, which will, I'm sure, stir a little consternation among our fellow advisors, as well as Busting the Retirement Lies and her first offering, which is on the Kindle book, isn't it? Mm -hmm. On the Kindle, which is Live Your Life Insurance. And if you go back to, I think it's our Wednesday show, you actually gave us a strategy to use for Kindle, which you, the first day you put yours out on Kindle, you had 1,500 clicks. That's wow, that's huge. Well. You are a recovering certified financial planner, that's what you say, Yep. and now a registered investment advisor. So you are talking about basic ideas of truth concepts. Now, when I look at truth concepts, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of a global guy, and I think of truth, I'm thinking like, well, I believe, what's my beliefs in God, what's my belief in my family, you know. When you talk about it, what are you talking about? We're talking about telling the whole truth to the client. And here's the challenge. Typical financial planning software is based on assumptions where we put in a bunch of information and then we assume interest rates, we assume tax rates, we assume longevity rates, we assume opportunity costs, we assume all these things. And then we spit out this thing called a financial plan, which is supposed to tell the client how the next 30 years of their money is gonna work. And I believe that is a false sense of peace of mind. And so we've developed the prosperity economics movement, which is what we've been mm -hmm. talking about all week, which is to get us to think differently. Well, this movement, how old is this movement? About a year. We now, just now created it's, it. It's a year, but actually, you said, I think, in Wednesday show, ah. this is way back. This is pre-1950, which is when we first began doing financial planning in the 50s. But this Correct. is this is its predecessor, and you're just, what, resurrecting it back into the 21st century. That's right, because when you look at the strategies and the principles that prosperity economics exist under, they were there in the early 1900s, mm -hmm. I would even say late 1800s. In fact, some of the products that support the prosperity economics movement have been around a couple hundred years. Mm -hmm. So yes, thank you. The prosperity economics movement technically is a new nonprofit that we formed, but the actual theories, the principles, you could even trace back mm -hmm. to biblical times if you wanted to. Oh my gosh. All Truth Concepts does is mm -hmm. prove them mm -hmm. because we're financial advisors. We need to have numerical proof. But the difference between Truth Concepts and financial planning software is that Truth Concepts uses the existing situation today to prove the most efficient thing for clients to do with their money. So whether it could be the mortgage, it could be the life insurance, it could be the qualified plan, it could be the mutual funds that they're talking about, whatever the client is doing with their money. And I want to introduce the difference between optimizing and maximizing. Well, so, yeah, What's the difference between those two? So when you look at the difference in the definition, a lot of us think that we want to maximize our money. Well, the definition of maximizing is to get it as big as it mm -hmm. can possibly be. And you know, we talked mm -hmm. earlier yesterday, I believe, when we were talking about the prosperity ladder and how much people should save and the whole challenge of people saving money, which America needs to do a better job of today, if we would shift our thinking from this maximize, which is just to get it as big as it can be, to optimize, which is let's just start with what we've got and make it as efficient as possible. Earlier, you mm -hmm. kept pinning me down between the difference between financial planning and prosperity economics, and that is the global overall difference, is that financial planning tries to set a need or a goal and meet that numerically, whereas prosperity economics just takes what we have and optimizes it. Because again, the definition of optimize is to take what you have and get the most that you can with it. And that's what Truth Concepts enables us to do. Okay, so, but this is all on a platform software that can be quantified. Right? Yes. Okay, yes. so talk a little bit about, I don't want to go through the whole thing, but give me the basics. Well, so this is a picture of one calculator inside the Truth Concepts software. It's called the Qualified Plan Calculator. And what it does is tell the truth about the qualified plan today. 
So now, of course, it does make some assumptions about mm. the future and it does project out in the future because you can't do anything with if without those projections if you don't have those. But the difference is it takes what you mm. have today and helps you get the most for it rather than trying to figure out what you want to have in the future, which frankly, you have no mm. idea. Think about your typical financial plan question. Hey, Steve, what age do you want to retire? You're just going to throw an age out there. You don't really know. Mm -hmm. And so then we plan everything towards this age when it has nothing to do with anything. What Truth Concepts does is say, let's take the qualified plan or the mortgage or the life insurance or the 529 plan or whatever subject it is that we want to talk about. And let's tell the whole truth about it today. What's going on with our money today in that particular area? That's what Truth Concepts does, as, a try, as opposed to trying to project forward and figure something out that we don't know the answer to. Okay, so the, if I'm hearing your premise, this snapshot of current money use mm -hmm. is way more important than projected assumption use. That's correct. That's basically what you're saying. Very well said. Yes, thank, well, thank you. you. I am the savant. What can I say? <laughs> we come back from the break. We're going to tie this whole week up. We're going to talk about everything, try to summarize it, and then you can bring on the hate mail as you see fit. We'll be right back at the commercial. It's not how much money you make for your clients, it's how much money they get to keep, especially in retirement. But retirement income could cause Social Security benefits to be taxed. One tax advantage alternative is life insurance designed as a non-modified endowment contract that can generate tax-free income without taxing Social Security benefits. These contracts offer differing funding options depending upon your client's risk tolerance. For more information on how life insurance can be part of your retirement planning, just email me at steve at downtobusiness.tv Brought to you by Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to our second segment. We're with registered investment advisor and multiple book author, Kim Butler. We're talking about her controversial, and it is, how financial planning is planning lies. And she has a lot of them. We only talked about maybe four or five of them. And then, of course, her Live Your Life Insurance, as well as the other book, Busting retirement lies. I, I didn't like the egg broken. That made me feel like your <laughs> promises were broken. We've You're talked about said. this all week. We've talked about all this week. We're talking about the difference between financial planning, which 99% of my audience, we have been into a long time. I've been in this business 30 years. I'm looking at what you're talking about. When I first read your stuff, I thought you were heretical, honestly, to be honest with you. And I said, oh my gosh, we need to put this gal in her place. But at the same time, I really saw some of the wisdom. There's some new, we're even doing some of the things that you've been suggesting for a long time. We're just starting to graduate, especially this issue of cash flow. Mm -hmm. That issue is a major paradigm shift for our industry. And that's becoming more important than as you compare it to net worth or, you know, maximizing your money when you should be optimizing, optimizing it, as we it. said in the last week. Now, talk to me about, let's say we're going to say, you're, you have people listening and they're saying, I don't know if I believe what you said this whole week. I've watched every show, but I'm open to listening to you in a little more depth. I know you do seminars. I know you have places where you bring in advisors and you walk them through what I would call shock and awe displacement of what they believe <laughs> to be true. Th think about it. I think this question is really great. I've heard Joe Jordan say this before. He goes, what if you believe something to be true, but it turned out to be a lie? When would you want to know about when it? When do you want to know? Yeah, when yep. would you want to know about it? Well, I guess we want to know about it. Okay. So I went through it also. I went through the transition of having to drop my certified financial planner designation, disprove everything that I had been taught and that I had been telling clients. And the way to go through it is to first get the concept down. Actually, let's back up. You said it well first. You gotta be open-minded. Mm -hmm. If you're open-minded, then get the concept down. And I think the concept is best gotten down with the book. So mm -hmm. they're there for you. And at the bottom of the screen, we have a URL where you can get 100 pages free on the Busting Financial Planning Lies books. Mm -hmm. This book right here. So if that's of interest to you, grab the 100 pages, get through the concept. If you like the rest of the book, then go to that as well. But then we offer training that backs all of these concepts up with numerical mm -hmm. proof. And all advisors want numerical proof. Mm -hmm. So at truthconcepts.com, we have available both online and live training where people can come and experience the full truth, the whole truth about their money looked at from an optimized versus maximized standpoint that proves out all of these things that prosperity economics preaches. And as you said in our earlier shows, prosperity economics has been around 100, 200 years. We may have coined the term, we may be writing the current books, but these go back to biblical mm -hmm. ages. And our seven principles of prosperity are great in theory, 
But if you come to the training, we'll prove them to you numerically. So mm. that's something that I would recommend. All that information is on truthconcepts.com. But then if you also will sign in on the Prosperity Peaks website, which is the URL that's listed below, we will continue to keep you appraised because we are starting a movement. And the Prosperity mm -hmm. Economics movement is designed to pull the advisors in that are practicing prosperity economics. Now, you may not be familiar with that term. You might be using particular software. You might be particularly selling whole life insurance as an example. You might be building assets under management as an example. But if you're open-minded to the ideas that we're putting forth mm -hmm. in the books, then that type of environment, the prosperity mm -hmm. economics movement, will put you with other advisors that are already practicing prosperity economics. And we have events and there are blog posts that you can link to because I think you'll find that your clients are already thinking that way. Most of the time when I present prosperity economics to a client, they say, you know what? I've always felt that way. I just couldn't put words to it. Mm -hmm. So this is really articulate. You think consumers are actually thinking this way and you're just articulating what they've been thinking all along. Correct. Well, I, I think that the real judgment call, and, I, and this is why I appreciate it because you have software, uh, ultimately all advisors are much more, I would think, uh, probably narrow in their scope. You can be holistic, but does the math still work? So that, that's going to be a quantification issue that you're going to have to come up with to really show, hey, this actually works. Now, you've done this several times. You've had major detractors. I mean, you've had people that, hey, take you on. I don't know how open-minded they are, right? But I want to be open-minded for, especially if the end game math works. If I have more money, if it's optimized, if I'm using yes. it the way I want to do it, yes. I'm into that being open. Now. You're doing, I, I think you're doing, a, a, in our city, you're doing a, a, a seminar. What are they going to see? What are they going to see in this session? So at the Prosperity Economic Summit, which is the next three days at the Phoenician, we are going to espouse the principles. So we're going to go over the seven principles of prosperity, which we covered yesterday. We're going to talk about the prosperity ladder, and we're going to go over the products that everybody uses, the products that are out there, the same products that mm -hmm. are all available to all of us. It's the strategies mm -hmm. we use that are the difference. So we're gonna talk about things like what you do with your whole life insurance policy, what you do with your savings account, what you do with your mutual funds, what you do with your qualified plan, what you do with the 529 plan. It's the strategies that we use that set us apart, not the products that people buy. I just had a, an epiphany of economic proportions. Basically, you're saying you cannot set it and forget it. Correct. I mean, you just that's what you're saying. I can't set yep. it and forget it. Doesn't wow. work. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker dealer compliance officer. Miss an episode? Just hop out to our video archives. And remember, you could be wiser as an educated advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next week.